Hello and welcome to Go Go Getaway. This is Nikki Rowland and I'm here today making a Coptic book. Um, so I'm starting off uh, by working out what size my middle pages need to be. So mid the middle sections of a Coptic book are made up of signatures um, and each uh, section uh, contains about three or four pieces of paper or card folded together um, and individually they are called signatures. Um, then you take about 10 of those or 15 of those and put them all together and bind them together to make your Coptic book. Um, so what I did to start off with was work out what size my covers were, which were pre-cut. They're actually five by seven inches. And then I needed to uh, make sure my pattern paper folded in half was the same size. Um, so they are, uh, and I needed them actually to be slightly smaller than the book covers once they were folded so that the book covers covered them. So I'm cutting my pieces of uh, cardstock uh, to nine and a half by four and three quarters um, and then I'm, cut, I'm uh, folding them in half uh, to make those little paper folds that you can see there. Um, I've done loads and loads in um, pattern paper and then I've done two for every one piece of pattern paper in pure white. I've scored them along the middle as well um, just to make them easier to fold together. I made myself some notes uh, that I kept on my desk so I could uh, always remember what size I needed to cut my pieces to and where I needed to score them and also how many I needed. Even with um, those notes in front of me I still managed to get it wrong on a few occasions. What I'm doing here is placing two sheets of white inside one sheet of patterned and I do that for every um, every piece of pattern paper that I've got um, and those are together, once they're inside each other, are called the signatures. Um, I then realised that I uh, didn't quite have enough um, and I just had to cut a few more there um, and then I I think I go off in a moment to um, actually go and find some more pattern paper because I didn't feel like my book was quite big enough. Um, and again, I have uh, cut signatures, sorry, cut um, white card to go inside uh, each one as well. Okay, so here's my extra pattern paper. Um, so I decided my book wasn't quite thick enough, so I decided to create some more signatures. Um, I'm just, again, cutting these down to size. Some of them aren't the right size. Uh, there isn't enough of them. Uh, I've got a sheet of acetate there, um, which should uh, make for a nice uh, middle page. Um, and uh, so basically I'm now, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna have this many signatures, it would be too many. So what I'm doing is I'm having uh, one piece of pattern paper filled with two pieces of white card and then another piece of pattern paper in the middle. It just means that I'm going to have lots and lots of beautiful patterns throughout my book, which I'm only actually going to use as a notebook, so that's why I wanted lots of white in there as well. Um, but um, this will just make the middles um, of the signatures look really pretty too. When it came to choosing my papers, um, I just literally uh, went through my older stash and chose papers that um, were either had like single sheets from older collections that I wasn't maybe going to use, um, or I had off cuts. Um, I had some quite large pieces uh, from papers that I had cut um, into small amounts into, uh, and therefore I wasn't going to use them as a whole sheet. So I figured that. Um, they would be better off used in my book. Um, I had quite a few pieces of paper that I really loved um, but just hadn't managed to get used when I was using the rest of the collections um, and um, this would just seem like a really great use of them. They're all now bound into a Coptic book and looking very pretty and getting some use rather than being carried around in my uh, crop bag um, and generally not getting used because they're not from the latest collections. Uh, some are but most of them aren't. Most of my papers I was very conscious as to which way round they were, uh, so anything with writing on had to be the right way round. Um, the exception is there is a piece of uh, paper with ampersands all over it, they are all going the wrong way. Uh, but I um, realised that when I was cutting the signature and just decided to roll with it. Now I'm moving on to my uh, front covers. So these uh, two pieces of wood uh, were 
um, given to me by a friend. Um, they're the they're five by seven inches, so they're a perfect size for book binding. Uh, they have no holes in them, so I'm just going along and marking the holes there. Um, I then needed to go and actually drill the holes, um, but unfortunately my drill had no battery in it, so I had to. Uh, Put that to one side and come back and do something else with my book uh, while my bat while my drill charged up. So what I'm doing now is piercing the holes all the way along each of those signatures. Okay, so holes drilled, um, and now I'm going to paint the front covers of my book. Um, I was really inspired by that piece of paper you see at the top there, which is a Paige Evans one. Um, I've also seen some uh, of these Coptic books uh, with painted front covers similar to this, done by Paige Evans herself, um, but on this occasion I decided to follow uh, as far as I could that piece of uh, paper just there um, that you can see and copy the colours to some extent and uh, the pattern. Um, I've just applied strips of narrow washi tape uh, to my book cover and uh, I'm now applying uh, metallic paint um, in the right colours. So these metallic paints are by Imagination Crafts, they're called Starlight's Paints and they have an amazing metallic sheen to them, they're really really gorgeous. We used them at one of the in one of the classes at GoGo -Go Getaway in uh, March 2017 and they were a massive hit, everyone loved how shiny they were, they really are beautiful. Um, so I don't quite have exactly the right colours so I'm just working with what I've got uh, to match to those uh, that paper as much as I can. Uh, instead of yellow I'm using gold for example, instead of a blue I'm using a kind of uh, jade or a dark turquoise. Um, and for the next section, uh, which is like a light pink or a purpley colour, I don't have the right colour at all. So I'm just mixing two together. So I've got a little bit of silver there and a light pink and mixed together makes this really pretty kind of purpley off, uh, purpley pinky colour, uh, which is really lovely. Uh, these paints are really super fast drying, so uh, seriously one coat will do it and uh, it'll be dry uh, within sort of ten, well, 10 minutes, less than that even if you've got a thin coat. Um, so now that all of my sections are covered, I can just peel back the washi tape. Um, I need to do that in the order that I put them on there um, so that I could pull them off properly without them being a bit messy. Um, here are both my covers done um, and now I'm actually going to um, start binding. So I'm starting off uh, with, well, following the instructions that uh, we produced for the Go Go Getaway class and I'm starting with the back cover and the last signature and my thread is going to go through that first hole right at the bottom of that first signature if I can get it through. There it is, pull it through and I'm just going to leave a tail um, of that thread hanging out so it's just going through the middle of the first signature the inside of that first signature um, and now I'm going to go around the back of the cover you can see which angle I'm going in from there and just going through there it's nothing fancy literally just wrapping it around and going all the way through I realized at this point that my paint was not dry inside the holes and therefore my needle has now got paint all over it <laughs> and so even though the actual covers themselves were dry the little tiny bits of paint that had gone into the holes that I drilled um, are still wet and therefore I've now got paint all over my needle and my thread. Really annoying. Um, so that's why I was just sorting that out there. Um, I've decided to wrap my thread around the book cover twice just to get started. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go back through the cover and out the other side trying not to get full of paint there we go I'm uh, just going getting through that now and um, because this is the first signature this is the most tricky uh, one to get started with really I'm trying to make sure that my uh, signature is in line with my back cover so I'm constantly just kind of adjusting it making sure that it's straight what I'm doing now is going back through the same hole in the signature that I came out of and the whole time I'm just trying to make sure that my covers 
my cover and my first signature or my last signature actually um, is uh, nice and uh, tight and all straight and aligned. So now I'm back with my thread in the middle of my uh, signature which is where I started and I've still got that tail um, that I started with so I'm just going to uh, tie the two together so I'm just there adjusting it to make sure it's all okay in the right places and once I'm happy with the placement I'm going to tie them together into a knot to secure the ends Okay, so uh, not tied, um, and now it's time to move on to the next part of the binding. So I'm picking up my needle again, and I'm just going to go down through the next hole um, in the signature. And out the back, pull that through. Okay, um, and oh, I'm going to trim that tail off because it's uh, getting in my way and it's going to cause me uh, problems every time I come through to the middle of the book. There we go. Um, so, so now my thread's out the back of the, the uh, first signature again, and I'm just going to wrap it around my back cover again. So you can see that where I'm going in there, and just going to pull the needle through. Out, and out there and again I've got paint on my needle uh, from one of the holes <laughs> and now that that's through there I can go back through that same hole um, in the signature that I just came out of so I'm just making sure my um, thread is all in the right place Okay, so back through that signature and out through the middle. And now my thread's inside the signature again, uh, in the middle of the signature, and now I'm going to go back down through the next hole. Uh, and repeat exactly the same steps again. So I'm putting my thread through the book. Um, this is leaving, you can't see because of the pattern, but this is leaving a line of thread through the middle of the signature, by the way. Um, and then I, again, I'm just going to wrap around my back cover. So through that hole, and up there and then back into that signature in the same hole again again I'm constantly just pulling my thread tight to make sure um, that my signature remains in line with my book cover Okay, so now I've reached my last uh, hole in my first signature um, and I have gone around my book cover. I'm actually going around it twice there. And uh, well, I'm just about to make a mistake, so I'm going back through the last hole in the signature again, as I have done all the way along. Uh, but at this point, um, I shouldn't have done that and I soon realised my mistake um, and go back through again. Um, I shouldn't have done that because what I should have done was taken the next signature and gone back through the hole in that one instead. So 
So here I am just going back through the hole that I shouldn't have gone through um, and uh, pulling my thread back through. And now I can take the next signature, uh, line it up and then go th through the top hole in that signature instead. And then my thread will be in the middle of the second signature instead of the first. The binding uh, then simply repeats. So doing exactly the same with the second signature as we did with the first one. So I've just gone with my thread in the middle of the second signature. I've now gone up through the second hole down. Um, and instead of um, going round my back book cover, which I don't, um, which I don't have because I, that was bound to the first signature, not the second one. Um, I simply uh, wrap my thread, um, well, put through, do my needle through um, the stitch that's holding the first signature and the back cover together. Um, so I can actually put the needle through and make a little loop there. Um, and uh, that will be sufficient to hold them together. And then my thread goes back through the same hole in that signature and I'll come out the middle again. You can see me here just pushing the needle through that thread that's already there and I can pull that tight and then because the threads looped around something I'm now able to go straight back into the same hole that I just came out of um, and that holds the two together. So this simply repeats and repeats and repeats um, until the binding is done in this uh, signature and then I can go on to the next one when I get to the final hole and uh, this simply repeats until the entire book um, is done. Now at this point I've actually run out of thread, um, it's getting very short, uh, so what I've simply done is um, come up through the middle of the book and uh, tie off my thread, tie it in a knot, um, and then uh, chop the end off, and then simply tie on the next piece of thread and continue binding as if I hadn't done anything different at all. Um, I had to change threads a couple of times throughout this book. It was quite a large book in the end, um, and um, the places where my thread is uh, tied into knots um, means that my uh, book pages don't sit quite as flat as the other ones do, unfortunately. Okay, so here I am, I'm just binding my final signature uh, to my book. You can see it's come on really nicely and that beautiful spine um, is looking really good with the chain stitch um, across it. Um, okay, so I'm now finished up through the last hole and the last signature and now I'm coming to add the um, the front cover. So um, in exactly the same way that I added the back cover, I'm now going to add the front cover. So my, I just place it in, get it in place, and then I'm, instead of going through the next signature, I simply go around the book cover. And I'm gonna go around it twice, just to give it a bit of extra um, hold. And then obviously I don't have a another signature to go down um, through the middle. Um, so what you do here is you simply go back down through um, the previous signature. Um, and what that means is that you will have two lines of thread going down the middle of the first signature. Um, but it doesn't notice and it doesn't seem to make any difference uh, to the flatness of the uh, book.
Similarly to when I added the uh, first cover and the first signature together, um, I'm constantly just trying to make sure that my thread's looking nice on the outside of the cover um, and to make sure that it's all in line um, and uh, being held in the right place uh, so that it doesn't slop around. And I'm just going to repeat this all the way along um, until my whole cover uh, is bound all the way along. And very annoyingly, I've run out of thread at this point. So like three stitches away from being done um, and I just couldn't stretch it any further. So I did have no choice but to change thread here. So again, I've just simply uh, tied off and then tied on again um, and continued binding as normal. So this is the last stitch and I'm just going to come back through so I'm inside the cover and simply tie a knot off again uh, in the middle of the book. And so you can see now that my book is complete, it's all completely finished. And now for the really fun part, I get to decorate the spine of the book. Um, I have uh, got some charms, some of the Paige Evans charms from her Oh My Heart collection, which are mostly for book, the bookbinding, I think. Um, and uh, I've got some of those. I've also got some lo tiny little tassels there, uh, I think from an old Maggie Holmes collection. I've also got a couple of buttons um, and I've got some uh, little split rings or jump rings um, that I, I'm using with some pliers uh, to um, place onto the charms and onto the tassels and onto the buttons um, so that they hang nicely, they dangle nicely. Um, I'm using a really tiny pair of pliers um, to, uh, to do this. Um, my split rings or jump rings are really, really tiny. Um, I bought them by accident, not realising how tiny they were. Uh, so I'm just having to work with that. It's a little bit fiddly, um, but I just about managed to, um, to work with them. Um, so for the buttons, um, they didn't have uh, anywhere to hang a little jump ring on, so I've tied some thread uh, through the middle of the button, um, and then I have put the jump ring through the thread on the back of the button, uh, and then later I've secured it all with a little bit of glossy accent so that the thread doesn't come un undone. And that's my book complete. Um, I've got added a few more buttons and charms um, and um, I also added a few paper flowers uh, from the Wild at Heart collection by Coco Vanilla. Um, I just simply wrapped those on. They've got white, they're on wires, so I just wrapped them through. Um, you can really see the chain stitch there um, and all the little charms that I've got going on there. And the gorgeous, gorgeous paints uh, that are so uh, shiny, um, the lovely, lovely metallic sheen. They're by Imagination Crafts, um, a UK retailer. Um, inside the book, um, I've got a couple, a page of a pattern paper, then two pages of note paper, then another page of pattern paper. So I've got loads and loads and loads of room for writing. Uh, it's, I'm going to use this as a notebook, so that's ideal uh, for me. I could definitely make this into a mini album if I wanted to. Um, lots and lots and lots of room for photos. It might be a bit epic to finish, um, so it's going to be a notebook for me. Um, I love the way the Coptic books look. Um, so, so pretty up on a shelf um, and a real talking point whenever you show anybody. Um, thank you so much for watching me to, with me today. Um, this is Nikki Rowland for Go Go Getaway.